Have you ever wondered how it is possible for a hot air balloon to take off from the ground with a lot of people in it and a heavy bucket? Well, in this calculation I will show you how much volume you need for a hot air balloon to take off from the ground. Let's say this is the one we want to derive, the volume of the balloon. Well, we need a lot of numbers to start with. So let's say we take in this balloon eight people, eight people, uh, each of which weighs 80 kilograms. The bucket itself weighs 200 kilograms and we need some mass for the balloon as well. Well, let's say it weighs 120 kilograms. I think this is a little low, but um, well, we have to start somewhere. And, and if we know the exact values of these, then we can do this calculation over and we come to the right answer with these numbers. So let's say we have a total of 960 kilograms to lift, to lift off. And we want to do this with an air balloon with unknown volume but with known temperature. Let's say we can make it 60 degrees centigrade into in the balloon. And outside there's temperature of 8 degrees centigrade with uh, atmospheric pressure. Well, then we have a lot of information already. What we need as well is the um, density of the air. Well, let's say air weighs uh, 28.97 grams per mole. And we know also that it has a volume of, specific volume, of 24 0.5 liters per mole. Then we have a starting point for the air density at which belongs with these numbers and that's not uh, 8 or 60 degrees. These conditions, these to, uh, this 24.5 is only at a temperature of 25 degrees centigrade and atmospheric pressure. So we have to find a way to convert these numbers into usable numbers for our uh, specific problem. Well, um, let's start with uh, Archimedes, because the air balloon is, is floating because of differences in air density. We need to have the, the law of Archimedes, and the Archimedes law is as follows. It says that the total force downwards from these people and uh, also the air in this balloon has uh, still mass so it weighs something. Um, it has to be lifted off the ground by a buoyant force and the buoyant force is um, in a sense um, the mass that is no longer there. So uh, when there was no balloon there was there um, the same volume was filled with air from 8 degrees centigrade. Well, there's no longer air from 8 degrees centigrade here because it's now a balloon with air from 60 degrees centigrade. So the total mass that is driven away from this volume, this mass from this air from 8 degrees centigrade, the mass is now a lift force. So that's what Archimedes said. Archimedes said, well, if you take the mass, so density times volume, times acceleration on Earth, we have the mass times g from the people, the bucket and the balloon, plus the mass of the air that's still in the balloon, and that's the air from 60 degrees centigrade, and this was the 8 degrees centigrade. So here we have our um, equation, which we can uh, rewrite to get v. But for this, we need to have these densities at 8 degrees and 60 degrees centigrade. And these g's will magically disappear. It doesn't matter if we do this trick on Earth or another planet, or if we take it high up, If as long as the, the pressure and the, the temperatures don't differ, we don't need g. Okay. So 
this volume we can calculate it now easy because we can rewrite this as v is equal to uh, we have to take this one to the left so row 8 it's m divided by density from 8 minus density from 60. I hope you see how I changed this one into that one. G is disappeared. This one went to the left and uh, I took V outside of the of brackets and then divided by rows row 8 minus row 60. So we are left with this one. But now how do we get to the density at 8 degrees? Well, there's um, this uh, ideal gas law that says that for every situation, so situation one or situation two, the pressure times volume divided by temperature should come to the same number if we calculate this. So we can rewrite this one to get V2. Why would I do that? Well, if we have a density at 25 degrees centigrade, which we have here in a sense, uh, let me uh, calculate this one first. Um, here we have air, the mass of air. Here we have the volume of air, the same amount of air. So we can divide these to get the density at 25 degrees. Is mass divided by the volume, and that would be 28.97 divided by 24 and a half, which is one point. 182 grams per liter which is of course the same oh let me undo this one the same in kilograms per cubic meter from grams to kilograms and liters to cubic meters is all is in the both cases uh, 1000 a factor of a thousand so this doesn't change the number so if we have the air density at 25 degrees, we can derive the air density at 8 degrees if we know how much the volume changes, because mass doesn't change. If we heat up air, the mass doesn't change. The volume does change if we heat up air or we cool it down. So we need to know how much does the volume change if we cool it to, let's say, 8 degrees Celsius. So now we look at this equation and let's say these are both one atmosphere so we can cancel these out and what have we left let's say v1 is one cubic meter we want to know how much that is volume 2 what we get is this one if we rewrite this a little bit and you can exercise this for yourself is that if we take all these numbers into account and we rewrite this then we get v2 or the the amount of the, the factor with which the volume changes is equal to t2 divided by t1 and we have to do it in uh, degrees Kelvin otherwise this ideal gas law doesn't work so we get here the following this is for calculating Celsius into degrees Kelvin and T2 was 8 and T1 we started with 25 so this one will be less than zero, less than 1 and the number exactly is let me see Here it is, 0 0.94, well, let's say 3 kilograms per cubic meter. I leave this number in my calculator so I can calculate with the exact number later on. Um, now we have to think a little bit. Um, the air density, density is always divided by volume, so if the volume changes with a factor, these, uh, the, the air density is divided by the same factor. So 
if we need to know the air density of 8 degrees we would start with the density of 25 degrees and divide this by the factor of the volume and that would be in this case 0 0.943 which results in a density at 8 degrees centigrade in 1.254 kilograms per cubic meter the same we can do for the density at 60 degrees we start with the oh, let's do it a little bit different um, I would start with 25 and I would take this into account instead of dividing by the factor V2 I now multiply with T1 divided by T2 because if you divide by a fraction it's in it's actually the same as multiplication multiple as multiplying with the opposite with the inverse of this fraction so let's do this uh, we already knew this one that was the 1.182 we got above let's see that was not one now we have let's see t1 is 298.15 divided by well let's do it this way plus 16 here we have it so we started with 25 degrees centigrade or 298 Kelvin and we divided by the 60 degrees centigrade but then in Kelvin okay if we calculate this one we come at a density of 0 0.5 1.058 kilograms per cubic meter so these numbers we need it and now we have them so we can calculate how much volume we need so let's see if we can fill this one in we started with 960 kilograms and we now have the numbers we need here the density of air at 8 degrees centigrade and we have to subtract here the density of air at 60 degrees centigrade and there we are and we arrive at the volume of 4,905 cubic meters that's our answer there and now we solve the whole problem we wanted to know how much volume would a hot air balloon need to lift off eight people with a bucket and itself from the ground at uh, outside temperature of 8 degrees centigrade and uh, inside temperature of 60 degrees centigrade well our answer is you would need 4905 cubic meters and this is the way you do it